Hello, hello. This is the Midwest Investor Report. We're coming at you. Episode two. Excited to be here. I, of course, am your host, Kyle Reedstrom. And you guys, we exist at the Midwest Investor Report to give you knowledge about your market. Now, here's the deal. I've been doing this for a while now. I've been in this real estate market, in this real estate game for about nine, going on 10 years, sold over a thousand houses in our area. I know a thing or two about this market. I've been in this real estate market. I've been a part of this community. This is the community I know and love. And the goal of this show is to hopefully give you some insights into things specifically about our real estate market in Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, and kind of the, the, the greater area. Here's the thing. Everybody dabbles in real estate to a certain extent because people want houses, right? So you eventually kind of got to know a thing or two about it. But I, my goal with this show is hopefully to give you some deeper dives into topics that might matter to you. You might be curious about, give you a little more insight into our market. You know, in this quarter, we're specifically diving deep into the house hack community. What is it to do a house hack? How could this be a play that I want to make as a homeowner investor? And we're talking on specific house ha hacking topics, which is kind of what we're going to do today. But before I get started, you guys, I definitely don't want to gloss over the fact that the Midwest Invest Report also exists as a newsletter. This is where we can pack everything down. If you're a reader, maybe you like to listen and read. We have different topics on the newsletter each week. This is the Midwest Invest Report can show up directly at the top of your inbox each week with all of the things that we talk about on this show and more and more and more resources. We want to get local uh, national news articles. We want to give you as much as we can on the Midwest Invest newsletter. Don't forget to sign up, join our subscriber list. Our subscriber list has been growing here as we get into, got into January and February. So click the link in the show notes. We're going to have that for the, in the show notes of the recording. If you can't find it on the live stream like this, go to my profile. There's links there. Get on the subscriber list. <clears throat> That's my plug for the newsletter. Let's get into it. Okay, so the rundown of today's show, we're going to do a little market minute. I want to talk a little bit about rent to own. Okay, rent to own is a newer concept in our area. It's not new overall, but it's something that's becoming more and more prevalent. I know more companies, builders uh, that are offering this as an option. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. The meat of today's show, we're going to talk about house hacking a duplex specifically. I think there's four systems you have to have in place. If you're going to house hack a duplex, specifically a uh, uh, duplex, threeplex, fourplex, really, but we're going to talk about a duplex where you're inheriting tenants and what you need to have in place to really do that well. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to get towards the end with a little journal prompt, what I've been thinking about, things that I think can be useful for you to be thinking about, and we'll close it up. So let's get in to the market minute. You guys, rent to own is exactly how it sounds, Okay. This is the concept that we're in the between, hey, I'm fully renting from a landlord and I'm not a full homeowner. There's this process in the middle. Usually this is a great option if getting qualified for a traditional mortgage is not quite hitting for you, right? If that's, if that's not working because of time at your job, credit score issues, uh, income things. So rent to own is this middle ground, this gray area that I see more and more companies offering as an option. And, and of course, I want to talk about that with you because for specific scenarios, this can be great. Okay, so the process of homeownership generally goes like, hey, I'm going to school. I don't. I have a place to live. Then I'm out of school. I'm going to rent for a while to get a feel for things. And now we're talking about homeownership. As a renter, a lot of people that we're talking to on our team, Midwest Invest Realty Group, brokered by Real, we're going, hey, check out a lender. Go get pre-approved, right? We'll start that process that way. If the bank says no, for some reason, because they have lots of boxes to check, rent to own options can be really cool. This is the idea that you get to rent a place for a while, continue to, to build in time, equity. You, you get to build in your, your financial world gets to get better over the time you're renting. And the rent you're paying actually vests you in the future property that you're you're going to eventually own. So you're usually doing this at one specific property, right? A couple of things to note that I'm seeing for rent to own is it can be a great win-win. 
for, there's a builder in town. There's a couple builders now that are actually offering this. I've seen this. There's a company that I'm actually a part of called First Store that offers this. There's a company that I have a friend that, that that's a part of that's called Home Equity Partners that offers this. Okay, and usually it's three big components. It's, hey, how much is this going to cost me each month? How much is this going to cost me up front? And how much is this going to cost me at the end? Like, what's the price? And these are kind of the levers that you can move back and forth when you're talking about this rent to own concept. And when I've seen certain rent to own offers, sometimes rent to own offers have really high upfront costs. Um, sometimes they have lower upfront costs and high back end costs. So really those are the three biggest details that I think are barriers. But if you can negotiate or have a, a really good understanding of, hey, what do I need to put in this initially? Down payment-esque. Some of them are fees or down payments that go, go towards your, your purchase at the end. What is my monthly burden? Does any of my monthly payment go towards my initial or my eventual purchase of this property? And then what is the purchase price that I will have uh, the ability to buy this property at? Okay, the example I see a lot, and this has got to be a win-win for both sides. If the property's worth three hundred thousand today, and you have two years to kind of rent to own this property, is the prop? Are you buying the property for three hundred and twenty-five thousand, or are you buying it for three hundred and ten thousand? I do think there needs to be a conversation around. Hey, the property is going to be appreciating, but uh, at what rate is reasonable for both parties and a win-win for both parties? So. I think I want to boil this down to, and just, just talking about this quick, this is an amazing option. I see this as an option for people that are new in their career. They don't have two years of experience because generally a bank needs that. Or people that have had kind of an iffy, kind of tough situation with credit where they went through a situation and they've got a ding on their credit, but they still have good income. They still have good savings. But the, because of the credit issue, the bank's not allowing them to buy. This can also be a great option there too what's the monthly payment, what's the upfront cost, and what's the end price that I'm buying it for? Those are the questions you should be asking. You guys, look for this option. Talk about this option with builders in town, with different companies. If you're looking for more information on rent-to-own options and you're curious, hit your boy up. I know people that are doing this. Um, there's, a, there's multiple options out there, like I said, um, and we can send you in the right direction. So let's get into the house hacking portion of the Midwest Invest Report on this episode. I want to get into house hacking that duplex. The duplex is the most common property type that we see people using the house hack strategy, right? And we kind of went over what that strategy is on previous episodes. What does it mean to do a house hack? How is this a great strategy? But what does this look like if you're actually doing it on a two, three, or four unit property? a property that you're inheriting tenants. Someone else is living in this property as you are. Um, and it just provides a little bit of nuance, right? This is their home too. And, and so essentially you're going and grabbing that hat and putting on the, I'm an investor and a property manager hat all of a sudden. And so there's four systems I think you need to think about and almost have in place before you get into your house hack duplex. Number one system is a property management system. Like I said, you're going to wear the hat of I'm a property manager. I'm managing this property for myself, of course, but for the other tenants that live in this property as well. You guys, property management doesn't have to be complicated. You got to have a way to collect the rent. And my advice to you is you have a streamlined way that that can happen consistently. There's a platform called Avail. That, uh, that online property management that, that allows for uh, rent payments to be automated. Something like that can be really good thought and something to implement before you get into this. Also, when it comes to contracts with property managers, you're the one that's responsible for leasing up this unit now. Um, and so you wanna have lease agreements. Uh, you wanna have different disclosures that are necessary. I'm not here to scare you on everything you need, if you're really curious about this, you should talk to a property manager, but you need to have thoughts around what contracts you need to have in place for these people to occupy your residence as a tenant. Okay. If you need resources on that, again, you guys always reach out. Uh, I know a lot of property managers and have um, some insight into some of those things, but that first thing you need as a system 
You got to have a property management system. Be thinking about that. Hopefully you already are. Number two system. You got to have a maintenance and repair system. Okay, so this is, this is almost like you're taking this hat off, taking the property manager hat off, and you're putting on the handyman hat. Uh, because there's things with any property, there's things that are going to happen. And happy tenants are ones that have the ability to submit work orders or if there's problems going on, hey, I need this looked at or I need this fixed, which is, again, kind of maybe part of your property management system. How are they doing that? Are they doing it on a platform or are they just calling you and texting you all the time? I know calling and texting constantly from tenants is sometimes the pain of why people don't get into real estate, but you can actually think through this and have more of a systemized approach. That's what I'm encouraging here. But when it comes to your maintenance and repair system, a lot of these things can be facilitated with through online software. And it's mostly, you guys, this is the obvious one, but the simple things are always most effective. The hardest things to learn sometimes. It, you need to set expectations with the people living in your property on how this process works. I remember when we got into property management early, and we wanted to be like, what happens if something happens? We had a magnet that we put on the fridge and was like, you got an issue, step one, step two, step three. It was an email to this place, or it was go on this app and submit the work order and take a picture, right? We can think through these things. It can be really effective for us. You got to have a maintenance and repair system, number two. Number three, I'm going to take all those hats off. Now you're going to put on your CFO hat. You got to have a bookkeeping system, okay? The two biggest components when it comes to properties in real estate investing, especially with duplexes and house hacking, I think you got to have a analysis of what you think the property is going to be. I think you have to have an analysis on where, where you think that property is going to go, like a projections, and then you got to take in the actual results. You'll notice that all three of these first things, you can actually hire people and companies for. You can leverage these things. Sometimes early on in our investment journey, these are hats we're going to wear. We're going to do the hustle because we don't have all the resources. We're in the process of building those resources so we can leverage down the road. But you got to have your head around what's your bookkeeping system. System number three is probably the one that I see neglected the most. People get into this game and they just kind of say, hey, we're going to figure it out as we go. We're going to float. We're not going to keep records of, of how things went year to year, month to month. We're not going to have projections. We're not going to have actuals based on our projections. We're not going to go back and look at our performance. This doesn't have to be made massively complicated. In fact, I encourage you, don't make some big, bad, nasty, huge, you know, automated spreadsheet. It's simple. How much money do you think you're going to make? What are the expenses going to be? What's left over? And where do I think I can go with this? You guys, people like banks are going to want to see this eventually. If you're going to sell this property in the future, people are going to want to see the statistics that have been, the, the, the history of the property. And if you have a bunch of unorganized data, you might not be able to maximize your sale. It's much like when you're starting a business, you plan on selling that business. People are buying organized businesses for more money than they are disorganized, you know, because then there's opportunity for them. And so you got to have a bookkeeping system. What's your, what? Where is your head at with how you're tracking the numbers? Where is tracking the numbers at in your calendar each month, each week, bi-weekly, whatever your rhythm is with that? And again, you could hire a bookkeeper, but if you're not in that place yet, you got to have your mind around this system. Okay. So we got property management system. We got a maintenance and repair system, and we got a bookkeeping system. <clears throat> the fourth system, which is not as much, I'm not calling it as much a system, but I think you have to have your three-year vision and your three-year dashboard created. The number one thing I see with the real estate investing community is everybody is looking at properties for what they are today, not what they could be. Now, I don't think we should go and overpay and, and buy properties for more than we should, but we gotta have a vision for where we want this to go. That's what makes a good investor. And so do you have a three-year vision for this duplex that you're looking at buying, this threeplex you're looking considering buying? What is your... How are you going to wear that investor hat? And what is your game plan for making that the best investment possible, the best choice possible? I'll tell you what, I know a lot of investors that analyze, 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 and they try to find that grand slam investment. And then I know some investors that just buy property. They just see something that hits their, their one, two, three filters. And they say, that's right for me. We're going to do that. 
And it's because they know that if they have a good game plan for increasing the rent, lowering the expenses, adding value to the property so they can increase amenities, uh, renting out the garages separately from the house, you know, there's all sorts of ways you can do this. The strategies you can do this over time. And you can make that into a great investment that somebody at the time that you bought it might have said, ah, not going to hit my criteria. So many investors are just looking at exactly what it is and be like, ah, it doesn't hit my filters. Better keep looking. And that's good. I want you to have criteria and filters and, and, and standards around your purchasing. But I also want you to have the idea that I can play the investor role. I can hustle. I can make good decisions. I can think about this. And this, this investment today that's a base hit can be a home run in four years. Okay. So house hacking a duplex, you guys were hitting the high notes here, but there's four systems. You guys got them property management system, maintenance and repair system, booking system or bookkeeping system, and your three-year vision and your three-year dashboard. What does that look like for you? Okay. I hope that meant something to you guys. We're obviously not going to be able to get into every single piece of house hacking a duplex, but this will get your brain going down the right path on what this might look like for you. Because we think that this tool of house hacking is very relevant in our community of Fargo-Moorhead. And it's awesome, awesome, awesome. It's something I did when I got into real estate. It's awesome for starting your portfolio and starting that net worth build, net worth build and that cash flow build using the low down payment house hack strategy. So that's why we're talking about it all quarter. You guys, I want to end the show with a little journal prompt. And it comes from the story and everybody's especially in the interview process. I remember this when we're, when you're getting out of college and you're getting jobs and everybody always asks you, how much money do you make or what's the salary, right? And I like the question of how much money do you take? How much money do you actually have left every month at the end of the year? Yeah, you can have a salary that's like $75,000 salary, but what there's a component of your own self applied to that salary where you're either left with 20,000 extra savings to do cool things with, or you end up spending a hundred thousand and you're in debt. Okay. So I want the journal prompt to be, what does your monthly revenue look like for you as a person? What is your monthly expenses? And you know where I'm going with this. What's left at the end, which is what is your monthly cash flow? I think it'd be cool if everybody walked around with their cash flow number. Say, hey, my cash flow number each month, what I'm getting ahead on each month, the budget I'm sticking to allows me to cash flow each month. Okay, and what's your system for managing these three levers? Revenue, expenses, cash flow on a personal basis. Obviously, I've said the word system a lot during this episode because I think you have to have thoughts about your rhythms for how you do these things in order for you to get into some of these things like house hacking. And so I want you to journal prompt on those things. I love doing this. Get your mind right. Brings up some really cool ideation and hopefully things you can implement to get you further down the road in investing in real estate, which we know we are so passionate about at Midwest Invest Realty Group. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up. This has been episode two. We went over the four systems. You guys don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. The newsletter is something we're very excited about. It's a way for us to engage with our community and provide more value than the show um, and, and continue to dive deep into our market. So you know everything there is to know about your market. Also, feel free to leave us a comment, ask a question. We want to continue to bring content with the show that's relevant to you, the audience, the people that want to listen and check it out. So ask that question. What's that prompt? Uh, or what, what question could prompt us to, to add more content to the show? We'd love to hear from it. We read everything. And so you guys, I'm going to let, I'm going to wrap it up with this. The reason we start this show, you guys, is because we are in this market. We want to let you know more about this market. We want to engage with you on how real estate can be an awesome tool for wealth building in this community, Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo. I'm Kyle Reedstrom. This is the Midwest Invest Report. We'll see you next week.